You were not meant to be a slave to the grind. You were not meant to trade your life force for money. You can escape gravity. You can unlock your life. You got this. Let's go. Hello and welcome to Unlock Your Life. Jennings here and I'm so glad you could join us today. We've got an awesome, awesome episode coming up. We're going to be talking about something that you're probably afraid of or you might feel guilty about it. But once you figure out how to unlock this piece, you can change everything. So what is our ultimate resource? What is our ultimate, ultimate resource? We had an episode a couple episodes back where we talked about money not being the ultimate resource and the, the saying time is money is completely and patently false. Time is time and time and focus is our most important and most valuable resource. That's the ultimate thing, guys. I think of it as a beam of consciousness. I have a beam of consciousness. You have a beam of consciousness. And whatever we direct this beam at, we will expand. We will conquer. We will make it better. We will solve the problem. I heard Will Smith talking the other day. He said, whatever I focus on and put my 10,000 hours in, which is kind of the timeline it takes to master something, I'm going to succeed at that. I'm going to achieve at that. And he's talking about that beam of focus. And so whatever we place our time and focus on is going to expand. The scary thing is that may not be what we want, or it may not be in the manner that we want it to be. So what if I told you that I had a tool? And this tool was not cheap. You know, it, it costs about $3,000 a month. Or if you wanted to get the deluxe package, it was $5,000 a month. So you're talking either thirty six dollars to $60,000 a year, depending on the features and upgrades. And so it's not going to be cheap. However, this tool, when mastered, can make you at least $100,000 a year. And in some cases, this tool can make you over a million dollars extra additional per year or even more, right? This tool is going to put a whole lot more money in your pocket. This tool is going to give you ultimate time freedom, ultimate time freedom. It's going to generate more happiness. It's going to allow you to work on the things that you are good at and that you enjoy. Stop focusing on the things that you don't enjoy and are not good at and can revolutionize whatever business you're in. You interested in the tool? Some of you may be interested. I mean, it's like, well, sure, man. I mean, that is kind of expensive, but at the same time, if it can do all that, I'm going to figure out a way that I can, I can afford this. Before I get into that a little further, I'll tell you one more story. I was at a conference, guys. This was about, I don't know, five years ago, four or five years ago. I was involved in a construction franchise, and there was a young dude who was the founder of this franchise. And he had generated a construction franchise that had 120 units in it or 120 franchisees building hundreds of millions of dollars worth of custom homes. And it generated a royalty program of 4%. So 2% was going to him and the other 2% was going to the regional partner there. But you're talking a very, very, very valuable company. And this guy was very, very busy. Or so I thought he was very, very busy because I mean, look, I'm running one construction company and he's, you know, in a way running hundreds of them. And I'm thinking this guy's got to be running just crazy. How did he achieve this? How did he accomplish this? He also had his own franchise and he had a bunch of multifamily real estate and just an exceptional guy. And he's, he's younger than I am. He's 32, 33 years old. And I asked him, how do you do this? And this is where we're getting into the core of this program. I asked him, how do you do this? And he said, Jennings, here's the secret. I'm actually not as busy as you might think. And I said, really? Yeah, because here's what I do. Every single week, I'm auditing what I am doing, and I am pushing everything off my plate, pushing it off my plate, whether it be a process, 
you know, this is something that we can set up a process so that we don't have to make these decisions again and it can go on automation. Or I am finding someone that can do this for me by way of an employee, by way of a partner, by way of a teammate, by way of an assistant, whatever it is, I'm finding a way to push everything off my plate. And I said, okay, don't you feel guilty about that? That was the first thing that came to my mind was don't you feel guilty about pushing everything off your plate? And he looked at me and he kind of he kind of laughed a little bit. I think he was laughing because I was so far behind him in the mindset game. And he just said, no, because what he understood was a guy like him and a guy like me and someone probably like you, if you're listening to this show, when we push things off our plate, we don't go sit on the beach. We don't go watch Netflix. We don't go lounge on the couch. We find the next important thing to be working on the next important opportunity. We start the next business or we figure out the problem in the business that's happening now and how to solve that. And we open up that opportunity further and we generate more income and we generate more opportunity and we generate more jobs and more money, more value and more growth. And that's just how we're wired. That's how we do it. And so when he told me that and I realized I'm working on the same problems over and over and over again. I'm not pushing these things off my plate. I'm not changing anything. I'm not moving the needle. And that's why I have done what I've done. And that's why he's done what he's done exponentially. If you haven't read the book, Who Not How, I recommend you grab it. This book has a tenet of finding the who to do your how. Instead of asking the question, how do I do this? You're asking the question, who can do this for me? Who can I team with to make this happen? Who already knows how to do this or who that I could be connected with could make this whole thing a whole lot easier? And when you start asking that question, which is a better question, which is a much more effective question than how am I ever going to learn all this? Or how am I going to do this on my own? Or how am I, how, how, how? Instead, you're asking who, who, who? That's when opportunity becomes limitless. And beyond that, timelines also start to fall away. Because if it's not just you, if you need to take a couple years to learn and, and totally master something, well, then you're a couple of years from it. But if you find the person that's already mastered, that's already been working on it for a couple of years, and you can plug that person in, boom, timeline collapsed, opportunity unlocked. And so when I'm talking about, back to my example of the tool that can get you more money, the tool that can get you more freedom, the tool that can get you more focus, it is the correct who. And in that example, I was talking about maybe an executive assistant, somebody that is working with you day in, day out to get these things off your plate and get stuff done. And that's where I think that a lot of us could start. Depending on where you're at in business or in life, some of you may not be there yet, but I bet you a lot of you are there and you just don't think you're there. What do I mean by that? Well, I was bound up by fear. And I'm going to tell you my own personal story here. I thought, okay, the admin assistant that I want to hire, you know, it may be, um, I don't know, four or $5,000 a month. So I'm going to need $60,000. Wow, I don't have an extra $60,000 laying around. That's kind of a big commitment to have to pay that. And I'm really not that busy. I probably could get all this stuff done myself. And so it's just not the right timing. When I make more money, that's when I'll make the jump. Maybe you're already telling yourself this as you're listening to this episode. This episode maybe is not for me yet. I'm not quite there. And let me tell you, if you can barely pay your mortgage and you're barely paying your bills, then this maybe this episode isn't for you. But a lot of us are where we really do need help, and yet we are not making that happen. Why? Well, let's go back to thought auditing. Maybe you're thinking, well, it's too hard to train them. Well, it'll take too long. It's faster to do it myself. It's easier to do it myself. Or I don't really, really need them yet. I'm going to need them later. So I'll just do it later. Or 
I don't have an extra $60,000 laying around, so it's not really the right timing. Or maybe you don't want another employee. You don't want to be beholden to somebody else. And so you are worried about messing up their life. Maybe you're worried about making the wrong hire. That was something I was really worried about, was hiring the wrong person and it not working out. And then I got to lay them off, you know, three months later and I got to start all over. And and now I've screwed up their life and I don't want to go through all that. So it's just easier to just keep doing what we're doing. Guys, you know what the best way is to get water from point A to point B, to get water across the desert? The best way to do it is to build a pipeline. The easiest way to do it and the fastest way to do it, at least to get the first couple of buckets across the room or across the desert, is to pick up a few buckets of water and carry them across the room, walk back, fill them back up, carry them back across the room, walk back, fill them back up. And as long as you keep doing that, you're never going to stop and build that pipeline. Because when you stop and build that pipeline, you know what? The buckets stop getting carried across the room and you think that production's down. You think this isn't working. You think this is expensive. This is not fast enough. I'm not getting results immediately. And yet, once that pipeline is built and you open up the valve, imagine the volume of water that is going across that room, that's going across that desert. And that's where we need to be thinking is are we building pipelines or are we building or are we carrying buckets because every time that you're doing those things that don't seem to be that big of a deal but you know i'll just do it because i know how to do it every time you're logging into your online banking paying that bill every time you're setting up that llc every time you're booking that flight in that hotel every time you're having that staff meeting that Maybe you don't necessarily have to be the one having that staff meeting. All those little drops add up to you carrying buckets across the room. And you're not stopping thinking about what you're doing and focusing your beam of energy, your time, and your focus on something that really matters. You're focusing it on something that doesn't really matter or is not moving the needle. So, When you do this, when you start to do this, that's where you can have extraordinary jumps. When I started doing this, I had extraordinary leverage when I started focusing on the right things. And even if you're not to the point where you've got the ability to hire help and hire a team and do all this, you still can make partnerships. Right? It doesn't cost anything to make a partnership if you're just an equity partner. They do their part, you do your part, and you both reap the benefits. Yet, we're all muling on something. And this is the point of this show, is focusing that time and that energy beam on the right thing. We're all muling on something, okay? And when you get to something that is working for you and you're getting success and you're making progress and you continue to focus on those same things, they got you to where you are but they're not going to get you to where you want to be. They're not going to get you to that freedom area, to the money area, to the goals that you're trying to achieve. What worked to get you here will not work to get you there. And so you have to change. You have to adapt. You have to constantly be pushing that mule work to ever increasing heights. Guys, we are all mules to some degree and i don't want you to get too cute with this that where you got to automate every single little email and automate every single little thing and you never have to do anything because that's not going to bring happiness work brings happiness working on things that we're passionate about that we care about achieving stuff accomplishing things that is going to bring happiness and so i want you to work on the things that are not only going to make you happy because we can be very happy just doing the things we're good at, muling out on the same tasks that we've already mastered and they're really not hard for us anymore and we get these accolades for them, but they're not pushing us to the next level. That's the scary part. And so I want you to think about working on different problems and pushing those mule problems that you've already mastered that can be trained now, they can be subbed out, they can be pushed off your plate so that you can mule out on the next iteration. Right. So what do I mean by this? Let's say you are I'm in apartment complexes. Right. And 
we buy an apartment complex and it's a lot of work to get it under contract. It's a lot of work to get it over the finish line. And then it's a lot of work to operate it. We have calls every week. We've got to manage the property management companies. We've got asset managers. And so what we did was we hired property managers. Did it cost money? Yes. Are we having to give up some of the profits versus managing it ourselves? Yes. Are they doing it as well as we could do it? Maybe, maybe not. I actually think that they do it better than we could, but even if they couldn't, let's say they could only do it 80% as well as we could. If we're doing it, then we're limited. And every time we want to buy an apartment and scale, we have to add more staff, add more managers, train them up. And that's not the business that I'm in. I'm in the business of acquiring assets, of getting real estate, getting debt, and getting that debt paid off. I'm not in the business of building a massive management company conglomerate. I actually sold my management company off because, not because it wasn't a good business, but just because that was not the business that I was in. That wasn't the business that I wanted to be in. And I didn't want to mule out on that because I knew that if I focused on that, that would expand and then I'm expanding something that I don't want. What do I need to focus on? What do I need to expand? The next deal. How do I get the next deal? Now, I can't just forget the deal I closed and and I hope it goes well and nobody's paying attention to that, but I've got to get you know, either my partner looking after it, my executive assistant looking after it, having these weekly calls, measuring the KPIs, where I can distill it down to a 15 minute a week meeting and I can review my 15 different apartment complexes and I can see which ones are off track and that need my focus and which ones are fine versus spending 15 hours a week sitting through all these meetings, going over the numbers, going over the data. I can hire someone to sit through those meetings for me and then refine that data, bring it to me and say, Jennings, this property is in trouble. We need to focus on this property. Next week, you need to sit in on that call. We need to bust some heads. We need to get it back on track, right? That's because I do need to focus on that problem so it doesn't go off the rails. And I need to be focusing my mule efforts on finding the next deal. So how do I do that? I'm building relationships. I'm building relationships through my Facebook group. I'm building relationships through brokers. I'm building relationships with investors. I'm generating more money, generating more people that want to invest with us so that when we do find deals, we have the ability to close them. I'm continuing to submit my relationship with my loan sponsor so that he's feeling confident to continue to sign on our debt. I'm building my own balance sheet so I can sign on my own debt. These are the things that are higher level, and I'm not even going to say the highest level because they're not the highest level things I could be doing. That's just the iteration that I'm in right now. So I can focus on those and I'm not focusing on the past. And eventually when I have something that's higher level to focus on, and when I push this off my plate, I can have somebody else acquiring these and raising the capital and pushing that dream and goal forward if that's what I want to do so that I can focus on my next thing, but we're always pushing that work to a higher level. You're always a mule. You are a mule and there's nothing wrong with that. And being a mule actually makes you happy. Doing work that fulfills you is going to make you happy. Making progress is going to make you happy. And I want to be happy. Yet I want to keep evolving my mule efforts to the highest level that they possibly can be. So going back to my exec assistant. I want to walk you through some of the thoughts that I had around that because you may be feeling some of these excuses and you may be feeling some of these fears. And I want to walk you through how I audited those and overcame them because it was a really, really great decision to hire this executive assistant. So first of all, the money. Let's say you don't have $60,000 or $30,000 or however much this assistant's going to cost. Well, there's a couple options you've got. One, you don't have to have $60,000, right? What do you have to have? You have to have $5,000. That's going to get you through a month. Then you got to have another $5,000. That's going to get you through two months. And at that point, you're going to see, hey, this is working. And hopefully you're going to start getting some return on your investment. After a few weeks, they should be taking a massive load off of your plate. And that's where you're striving and pushing to see, how can I make this person pay for themselves? How can I make this person be an investment so that, I'm scraping these hours back out of my life by pushing them off onto their plate. How can I utilize these hours in a way that is going to generate the next deal, generate the next income, the next company I'm going to build, the next dream that I have, whatever that's going to be. You've got to keep that focus sharp, right? 
So you only need to have a couple months of runway to have the confidence to make that hire because after that, they're going to start generating replacement income for you and you're going to be shooting that income up. And if you don't know how to do that or you don't feel confident that you could do that if you had more time and opportunity, then maybe you shouldn't be a hiring executive assistant. Second thing that I was worried about or thinking about was the personality thing. You know, what if it didn't work out and what if we didn't like each other? What if I was having her quit her job and it just wasn't a good fit? I was going to feel really, really bad. Well, I distilled it down to this. She doesn't want to stay at that job anymore. If she did, she wouldn't be pursuing me. She wouldn't be interested in this. We wouldn't be having these conversations. So she's not happy there. So her staying there isn't going to make her happy. So that's off the table. That was just kind of how I mentally got around that. Secondly, let's say she does come and work for me for a month or two and it doesn't work out. Well, I have helped her figure out what she doesn't like. And I've helped her make the jump into the next career. It isn't with me, but the next career that is going to make her happy because we know she's not happy where she is right now. And it also got me thinking, I'm not fully responsible for her happiness and her success. And if she wasn't doing well in the job and she wasn't liking it and it wasn't working out, she would not want to stay there anyways. It would be a mutual decision for her to jump in and find something else that she could be fulfilled in and she could be happy in and stop thinking of myself in such an egomaniac way that I'm going to make her happy. This job is going to make her happy. It's going to bring her all the fulfillment in the world. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know, but the only way to see if it could be great and it could work out is to take that risk. And so that kind of got me over, one, the money, and that got me over, two, is this going to work out? And if it doesn't work out, am I willing to, to walk through that emotional pain? And I was, because I thought even if it does not work out, it will still be good for her and it will still be good for me. I'll learn a lot of lessons and hopefully this will help me uncover the right person. And guys, obviously you don't want to do this in a cavalier fashion. And I didn't. Interviewed, interviewed again, had my partner interview her, went through personality tests. I took personality tests, submitted them to HR consultants, did everything I could to ensure that this was the wisest hire that I could make. And so far, so good. It's working out very, very well. But our ultimate resource is time and focus. And if you are afraid of making this commitment to people, to finding those who's, then you're going to be very, very limited in where you can go. And if you're feeling guilty about pushing things off your plate, recognize that when things get pushed off your plate, you're only going to create more opportunity. You're only going to create more value. You're only going to create more wealth. You're only going to create more companies and make everyone's life around you better, a blessing. And so that's not something that you need to be afraid of pushing things off of your plate. And the things that you hate, maybe the things that they really, really like to do or really, really want to do. And if they're not, then they can find the person to put that on as you guys grow together. You know, that was another realization I had. I could get a, a VA in the Philippines to assist my executive assistant, as we grow together and as she gets more and more important things on her plate, I want to continue to have her muling on the very most important things for her, the highest and best uses for her. And those lower uses, I want those to be shed off of her plate, right? And just because they're a lower use for you or a lower use for your assistant doesn't mean that they are not a honorable and highest and best thing for somebody else. So, that's what I got for you guys today. Your highest and ultimate resource is your time and focus. Do not waste it. Do not focus your time and attention and your consciousness beam on something that you don't want to grow, right? If you are doing accounting and paperwork and you hate it, stop focusing on it. Stop doing it because the more you do it, the more entrenched you get into it, the more you have to do it, and the more it grows. If you hate making sales calls, then you need to go find and train a salesperson because the more that you do that, the more it's going to expand and grow. If you think the way of the future is I've got to find this next technology 
or I've got to find this next hire, this next talent, or I need to go find the next deal, or I need to raise the next couple million bucks, or whatever you think is the highest and best use for your time, that's what you've got to focus on. And to get there, you've got to focus on finding those who's to do the how, not how do you do more yourself. So guys, have a great week. I appreciate you being here. Hit me up, grab me a review, send me a DM if you're enjoying this podcast. It means a lot to me and I appreciate you. Peace. This is the podcastfactory.com.